Adding Shortcuts app to macOS Monterey is one of the most powerful new feature. But have you had a chance to properly use it? Maybe you will after watching this video, because it's useful app which allows you to automate tasks on your Mac. Let's first launch the app. I will do it from the launchpad, but you will also find it in the applications folder or you can search for it using Spotlight. So when you launch the Shortcuts app, you will see some things here on the left. First is the gallery and then some other tabs here for all shortcuts, quick actions and the menu bar. These might be actually empty if you haven't used it yet. But they may already contain some shortcuts that you have created on your iPhone or iPad because it is all synchronized using iCloud. But let's go back to the gallery here. Great thing is that Apple includes a lot of shortcuts which you can easily add. You don't have to do any programming at all. And they are nicely divided into different categories, like Get Organized, Essentials, Work, Apple Music, Reading and so on. I will try to point out and create the most useful shortcuts in some of the future videos, so I would encourage you to subscribe if you don't want to miss it. But in this video, we will focus more on the basics of this app. I will go and choose something very simple from the started shortcut. And that is to create a new note with a date. It's a useful shortcut. If you press the plus button, it will immediately add it into your shortcuts. It will put a copy of it under all shortcuts. And now I can use it. If I use the play button here, it will simply run the shortcut. It's the standard way how to run the shortcut. But first of all, it's not convenient place to run it at all. I would always need to open the app, click on the shortcut and run it from here. It wouldn't be really shortcut. So let's dig into it more and edit it to be more useful. So you simply double click on the main part of the shortcut, not the play button and it will open it up. Here you can see the steps what the shortcut is doing. Right here it creates note with the current date and put it in the notes folder you select. You can leave it like this or choose a specific folder you want to be creating these notes. I will put it in my work folder. In the second step, it asks you for the text with a question. What do you want to say? You can even change this maybe for type your note here. And when you click on show more, you can even put the default text you want it to be always written there. But again, you can leave it empty. Next thing you can see is that between the steps there are some short explaining comments. It's all about what's going on in this step. I like it, it's a very useful way how to learn more about the shortcuts. But enough of talking, let's run this shortcut and see it in action. The first time you will run it, it will ask you for the permission to access notes. So I will do that. It won't ask for that again. Now here is that message we edited and we can type something new and after press done. You can see, now it created a note with a date and it put our text in there. It's a regular note in the work folder including today's date. It's so simple. And if you want to change something, you can go back to the shortcut and edit other things. You can for example change the format of the date and time. But it's details we don't really need to bother about now. Interesting thing is that you can actually delete some steps and it will still work. We can use the X button here and remove this last step. So it doesn't show us the note at the end. It just creates it in the background. But now the important part. How to access this shortcut better? For every shortcut there are settings over here on the right. So you can determine where else you can run this. So right now we have to launch shortcut app and press the play button for it to start. But we can also pin it in the menu bar. When you do that, it will appear in this special menu bar icon here. So click that and you can see all of the shortcuts you pin in the menu bar on one place and you can easily run them without launching the shortcut app at all. You can also set shortcuts to run as quick actions, so they will appear in the services menu or in finder or touch bar if you have a MacBook with touch bar keyboard. On top of that, you can even give it a keyboard shortcut right here. So that makes many convenient ways how to actually run these shortcuts you create. 
Now let's go back to the gallery and look for another shortcuts in there. You can actually preview any shortcut before adding it into yours. So don't press the play button, but simply click on it. It will show the description and mention on which devices it will also work. This one for example will appear in the Apple Watch as well. Now I can add this into my shortcuts using the blue button. But I can also just preview the shortcut to see the steps. Maybe I just want to learn what it does. This one is specifically used for removing distractions. So it will turn on do not disturb mode and quit selected apps. Now because of that we have learned something new. So let's create our own shortcut. You can do that with the plus button here or command plus N like new. If you prefer keyboard shortcuts, I have recently posted one hour long video which will teach you more than 100 shortcuts in one place. So check it out if you are interested. Now back to this, press the plus button and it creates a blank shortcut here. On the right we have all these different steps, these actions that we can add to the shortcut. Notice that whatever category I choose or click on any app, it will give me some suggestions. But let's create something very simple, inspired by the shortcut we saw before. For example, when I finish work, I want to close all the windows, quit all the apps and relax by watching some YouTube videos. What I want to do is to quit all except Safari and automatically open YouTube. There are two simple steps. First, let's search for quit. Sure enough, there is quit app. I'll double click it and add it to the script. I can select app I want to quit or select all apps. If I do it, it will ask me accept to keep something open. Here let's search for Safari. Now we want it to open the specific website, so we will search for URL. And here it is, open URL. Now we can type or copy paste the website link we want to open and we are done here. But what if Safari is not running in the first place? We want to make sure it will get launched. Honestly in this case it's not needed, because it knows that in order to open the website it needs to open Safari. But why not learn another useful action? So let's search for open. Drag it here in front and select the app I want to open after all of them are quitted based on the first command. Here it will be Safari. Now the script is done, so let's name it somehow. Like Borg done, open YouTube. Click on the icon also to select different color. I don't want it to be pink or purple. And after I can select another icon. Maybe the YouTube play button will nicely match. And of course, I don't want to be coming to the shortcuts app to run this. It would be really useful to have it here in the menu bar. So I will select pin in menu bar. Now we can quit shortcuts app and test it out. So open bunch of random apps. And actually quit Safari, so we can see if it open. Now I will click on it in the menu bar. And there you go, let's see what happens. You see I've got Safari here running in front on the website I have chosen. And all other apps are turned off. Very simple, but a useful thing. Shortcuts app can really do a lot of things. It can even run scripts. So I believe one day it will actually replace Automator app. But don't worry if you are using Automator often. You can actually transfer your Automator workflows from there into Shortcuts app. Before doing that, go to Advanced Settings first and allow running scripts. This will allow Apple scripts, JavaScript and shell scripts to be opened. It's something that Automator uses. Now go to File, Import and you can select an Automator workflow. Here I've got one that puts Mac to sleep, so I can add it into the Shortcuts app. I hope you didn't fall asleep after all of this, because it was just a basic overview of using Shortcuts. It's quite a fun app, so what you need to do now is to just play around examine the things and find the interesting ones, everything what you like to do. There is actually a way how to share the shortcut scripts, so in the description of this video you can find a shortcut we created for closing all apps and opening YouTube. 
and you can actually add it into your Shortcuts app with one simple click. I plan on doing lots of tutorials about this app in the future, so I believe I will see you in the next videos as well. Thanks for watching.